Perspective of your race. Background. Nationality. Success, Success is the one thing we all crave. Success. 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 Allow me to define success as the achievement of one's goals, the attainment of wealth, honor, stature, or the likes. In our pursuit of success, ladies and gentlemen, we sometimes tend to forget the little things in life that is the most important. We tend to forget those little things that makes life worth living. And when we realize it, it's most times too late. But if we are lucky, if we are lucky, we sometimes have that person on the sideline who's always there, that one person who encourages you, gives you a phone call to say it's going to be OK, who's not afraid to school you, but I was always there for you whenever you need a friend. So please do allow yourself a couple of seconds to just think of one person in your life that has always been there for you time after time. after time who catches you time after time identity and more specifically individual identity please do allow me to quote some scholars on this topic some of my favorite scholars say that or they believe that an individual identity develops grounded in the integration and acceptance of contextually specific shared beliefs, rules, values, and expectations as a result of communication and significant others and with generalized others. Some believe that identity and your perception thereof is a significant factor in your success. Now, what then influences individual identity? Environment. Ladies and gentlemen, how we walk, how we talk, and how we relate to others, all is influenced by our environment, where you grew up, who you associate with, what neighborhood you come from. All these things influences how we talk to each other, how we relate to each other, the kind of friends that we have. And specifically in the environment that I work, which is higher education, I realize more and more that the institution that you find yourself in also shapes your identity. For example, a couple of years ago at this university, we had some racial in inc inc incidences, which then <laughs> related to how black and white students communicate and relate to one another. So, what am I trying to say? Is that an environment influences an identity which is directly related to success, which then also influences the environment. So, an identity influences an environment. Now, I ask, how? Dear Gofsis, 
you are my first love. You hurt me to my core and you never even said I'm sorry. You tore down any hopes and dreams I may have had, caused me to abandon my own good reason. You led me to the forbidden forest but left me to salvage on my own. You tempted me with promises of success and hope but led me into situations where only failure existed. I loved you. And I guess I thought you loved me too. See, I heard your sweet velvet voice in my head buzzing like a colony of bees attracted by my nectar. When we first met, you told me. Only a Kofsi knows the feeling, so I pondered on what this feeling was. Was it the feeling of contentment on open day when you openly told me all the secrets of your heart? When you shared all the curves of your body, showing me how beautiful you were inside and out? shared your wealth with me, showed me the golden goodness of the deli chips, the crispy freshness of mama's kitchen, and you spoiled me with sweets and treats. Then, I still had googly eyes for you, tried to understand you was even willing to change myself for you. When orientation week came, you courted me like a true gentleman, smothered me with gifts, and whenever I needed help, you were always there to provide it. It was almost like everywhere I turned was a sign saying, Student affairs, ask me, frame. I felt so completely safe with you that I even stayed over for two weeks during in Blaviak. But that's when you changed, right? That's when you showed me your true colors, right? You forced me to tear on newspapers, stump on mesh, and paint on laughs ass figurines for your pleasure. Don't give me that look, you know you did. <laughs> then, when I got all used to your attention, you left me in your world all alone. Left me to find my own classes and figure out my own schedule. And most importantly, you left me to buy my own food. You were my first love. And I thought I was yours, but see, I guess I loved you too much because your interest in me waned like leaves in the fall, like heat in the winter, like this world without oxygen. I am suffocating without you. And it's sad because you've let so many people in, you'll never realize what true love is. You'll never know the truth. But my last cry for you, the one thing I know you need is a girl like me. A revolutionary soldier, someone loyal enough to stand by you through scandals and frefias, through deaths and plain sad, through racism allegations and Kofsi extravaganza. Someone willing to write you a letter in blood instead of ink. Someone who will read all about it, but not think all about it. And what everyone else needs is to believe in themselves enough to make changes instead of just discussing them. To live equally instead of just reinforcing it. And to know, no, to believe that we all belong here. Now, that's the Gofsi feeling. identity can indeed influence an environment and thus become successful. Ladies and gentlemen, please give a warm hand to the Kofsi students I present to you. So instead of making a speech, I thought, let me show you what we do here at Kofsi's and the privilege that I have to work with very talented students. None of them study drama or music, but they are talented. So sometimes, just sometimes, we need to allow ourselves to think of others and of their successes instead of our own. 
So I'd like to leave you with this. Ask why. Why can't I be the one who makes a difference in somebody else's life? I thank you.